Uh, my name is Dan Meyer. I'm uh, Editor-in-Chief of RCR Wireless News. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today I am joined by Lynette Luna, who is a Senior Analyst of Mobile Ecosystems at Current Analysis. Uh, Lynette, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Dan. Cool. Well, hey, uh, maybe if you want to give a quick intro of, uh, of yourself and of, uh, of Current Analysis. Uh, and for those who don't know, Lynette, uh, at some time ago, was uh, at RCR as well. So. Um, uh, she's been in the industry for, for, for a bit. So, uh, so yeah, Linda, if you want to give a quick intro of, of yourself there and, uh, and uh, Current Analysis. Oh, thank you. Well, um, yes, I've been at Current Analysis for about a year now. Um, I was in, like, you're correct, I was in the journalism world for about um, 15 years. So I've um, been covering this alongside of you and seeing all the uh, evolution of this technology, which has been pretty amazing. And yep. I cover the mobile ecosystem, which, um, covers more of the big picture of what is happening in the industry and how uh, different events kind of touch different players in the industry, so carriers, infrastructure players, device makers, chip makers, and, and kind of give a broad overview of you know how uh, companies should kind of uh, strategize and, and move forward when it comes to different technologies and business decisions. Got it, got it, perfect. Well, great, well, thanks so much for that. So, uh, yeah, so, well, I know one thing we want to talk about here uh, was uh, kind of the news that came out of the uh, the CES show uh, last week, I think it was. Uh, I didn't attend the show this year. Um, it's a crazy show, and I'm glad I didn't attend it. Uh, but uh, one of the big things that kind of came out of that show uh, was uh, from Verizon Wireless. Uh, they had mentioned uh, some, uh, I guess, some some plans or looking at doing some, uh, some broadcast um, television or, or streaming of content uh, using their LTE network. And uh, it seemed like kind of interesting a uh, move uh, made by, by, by Verizon. I mean, in the past, they've had some, uh, a bit of a history of doing some broadcasts with some other partners. Uh, this seems to be maybe something that they're working on, on with themselves uh, and, and using their own LTE network. And so maybe I thought we'd talk a little bit uh, about that and, and the impact that might have and, uh, uh, across the industry and if it might, you know, be the, the push that kind of broadcast space is kind of needed because it has been you know, kind of in the, in, in the wireless industry for a while but never really come to market. So maybe get your thoughts on, on, on what you heard from that and what your thoughts are on that actually maybe coming to fruition this time. Sure. Well, as you know, you know, mobile service providers have for the most part uh, seeded defeat to in the mobile video arena to over-the-top players. Yeah. Um, and then when it comes to LTE broadcast, it, it uses evolved multimedia broadcast, multi cast service, yeah. <laughs> but we'll call it LT broadcast. Um, it's been long touted as a way, you know, to mitigate the impact of video consumption on LT networks. Um, so just a allowing operators to handle the traffic from over the top. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was interesting at CES that we've, for the kind of the first time hearing carriers, uh, a little bit of carrier noise, but mostly vendor noise, of course, Ericsson and Qualcomm have really um, mm -hmm. been pushing LT broadcast just on, on how they can monetize it as well as mitigate traffic. So we kind of got a glimpse of, of what they're thinking in terms of monetizing LTE broadcasts. And, and um, you know, to that end, we heard Verizon uh, CEO Lowell McAdam talk about it during his keynote. I wasn't there, but I heard yeah. about it. Um, using the company's wireless business to uh, broadcast video over LTE as early as 2014, and he used the Super Bowl as a reference. Um, and, and Verizon was also part of the uh, CES LTE broadcast demonstration with Ericsson, Qualcomm, and MOBA TV, and some other folks. Um, and then, you know, we kind of heard Verizon kind of subsequently downplaying any specific plans, but there's a clear concept of kind of targeting um, venues where <laughs> video traffic is, is kind of um, the norm. Mm -hmm. So areas like sports stadiums, um, and, and that was talked a lot about, um, that allows users to access content such as maybe multiple camera angles or feeds and stats from live broadcast video. Um, and Qualcomm Labs has agreed to um, promote fan visions in venue broadcast service in conjunction with LTE broadcast, so it's kind of trying to kickstart that market. Yeah. Um, there's other talk of maybe providing video services to um, satellite campuses, uh -huh. so you have a, a quality video. Um, I guess it, it sounds like a great monetization opportunity, but it's not really a straightforward proposition. Um, there's operators that um, need to kind of retweak their infrastructure, and you need to have capable devices, and mm -hmm. you have to have enabling partners, and I think that maybe there needs to be a tighter integration 
on the venue side with mm -hmm. folks that offer services for venues. Um, and then you just need a significantly differentiated um, services from over-the-top options from a quality and a content perspective. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, that's a good point, too, because it does seem like the overtop players. I mean, if you look at someone like like Sling Media with their Slingbox service, I mean, if, if customers want to right now, they could have you know video streaming basically over their over their cellular connection right now and get all the TV that they want. Uh, I mean, obviously for the carriers, it seems like uh, that might not be a uh, a spectrally efficient way to, to to transfer network or, or content over their network. So perhaps that's why they're looking to, to do these things. But um, but yeah, like you said, it does seem like the over-the-top players out there are you know are pretty aggressive right now and. Um, you know, it seems like there's lots of options for, for customers at this point. So for the carriers to come in, you know, do you see them being as, as being maybe late to the game? Or how do you, how do you think, you know, th them coming at this point uh, plays out for them in the long term? I think that if they can come with this as a targeted way, then it can be more uh, of a revenue generator for them. Um, so I think they're going to be very careful about kind of what venues and such that they target um, mm -hmm. on this. Yeah. You know, it could be a, pub a useful public safety application or anything that needs you know higher bandwidth and um, to maybe offer something quite differentiated yeah 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 makes sense and again too it does seem like that at least with this announcement I mean they've got all the big names involved I mean they, you know Verizon obviously is a big player domestically uh, you got Qualcomm Ericsson um, you know these are these are big names are getting involved in this so that would seem to lead some more or lend some more credence to this being a being a an actual something that could actually come come to fruition um, you know, again, over the top guys. It's a lot of smaller companies that don't have kind of that big name cachet to them. So this seems like a maybe a good way for you know if this is going to happen. At least it seems like the, the right people are involved this time. Yeah, I agree, and I think um, operators really need to push their device makers and and really give them a roadmap of of their interest at this. Of course, you know, devices have long been the gating factor of many technologies. So yeah. um, you got to take give some time to let these devices seed the market, um, you know, I could maybe see some, especially like in, a, in an educational environment, you know, laptops that are LTE, or laptops or tablets that are LTE uh, broadcast enabled, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to watch a professor remotely, things like that, that can be controlled and maybe could be an early type of application. So, yeah. but it's, it's interesting because um, LTE broadcast can be obviously Operators can look at it as a traffic mitigation tool first, mm -hmm. and then look at ways to to make revenues from it. So yeah, and it does seem like too. I know Verizon's recent uh, commercials that have come out over the past couple of weeks have kind of you know not not directly uh, mentioned this as being part of what they're doing, but some of the stuff that they're showing in their commercials seems to be kind of a broadcast type of thing over over wireless, and like you said, almost like in a in a in a school environment too. So uh, you know, it seems like they're they're hinting around a lot more at it as well at this, at this point too. Yeah, they just don't want to commit to a yeah, I mean, yeah, to a I mean, or date or anything like that. But yeah, that's, sure. That's pretty par for the course. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And again, again, they do have Qualcomm involved, and you know, I think we both know Qualcomm's had a bit of a history when it comes to kind of the broadcast side of things. I mean, with their uh, their media flow service that that was out for a few years, uh, and eventually went away. But um, you know, and and they're, they're again a big chip company, so they can always help the, the handset vendors. Uh, when it comes to integrating any sort of broadcast technology into, into a device, so I, it, it seems like having Qualcomm on board uh, again adds some more, some more, uh, some more leverage to this uh, to this offering too. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so it makes it interesting. Well, again, uh, well, Linda, again, appreciate the time today talking about this, I and mean, obviously, it's one of those things that, like you said, is gonna, you know, probably take some time to come to market. Um, but uh, it's interesting to hear uh, a big carrier like Verizon and, and, and the partners involved, uh, you know, kind of. Kind of talking about it and sh and showing it off at the at the CES show, which is kind of a big a big media venue for a lot of companies to really talk about it. There is is to kind of put it out there for themselves. So it seems like a pretty interesting interesting topic. We'll see how how this uh, how this plays out uh, over the long term. Agreed. Oh, good deal. Well, again, uh, Lynn, thanks so much for the time today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan, for having me. Appreciate it. All right, and thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us today.